in righteousness. That's your concern you today.
must be born again. The Bible says, not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. That's what he said. Not of anything else, but of God being born from above. That's what being born again is. The Bible says we're born, yes, we're born once. We're born into sin. We're shaped in iniquity. The Bible says the wicked are strange from the womb. As soon as they be born, they go astray and they speak lies. The Bible says that's our condition. Utterly depraved. Radically depraved. Does it want God? Does it seek after God? Does it want to know who God is? It has no desire to know who God is. It only wants the loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes, and the pride of life. That's what this city is filled with. That's what cities throughout this nation are filled with. The loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes, and the pride of life. And he said in first John, these things are not of the Father, but of the world. The world's going to pass away in the loss of the law, but he that does the will of the Father about it forever. He said, this is all going to end. Heaven and earth will pass away. God's will shall remain. God's word is eternal. What have you done with the Lord Jesus Christ? What have you done with Christ? You understand the Bible says we must all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. One day you're going to stand before the God that created you. The Bible says the book shall be open, and the book that will be open is the book of life. And he said, his name does not appear in the book of life, but be cast into the lake of fire, this says the second death. Sin's not offering any hope. That's where sin leads to, the lake of fire. As he says, the fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, the whoremongers, and sorcerers, and all liars will have the part in the lake which burns and fire and brimstone. This is the second death. This is the day coming. As he said, there's a prayer that the man wants to die, and after this, the judgment. Seek the Lord this evening. You must be born again. As he said, but as many as received him, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God. That's what you need. You need to cry out to God this night. God, give me the power. Save me from my sins. Set me free. It's not one thing to have a form of godliness, but that power is utterly useless on the day of judgment. As he said, not a one that says unto me, Lord, Lord, I want to inherit the kingdom of heaven. But he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. He said, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name cast out devils. And in thy name that many wonderful works. And he will say unto you, I never knew you. Depart from me. You curse. You worker of iniquity. Don't understand, that's what's going to be told to the sinner. Those who even said, Lord, Lord. Those who even said, I knew God. I love God. And then God reveals your life, and this is where you were on the weekend. Not just here, but where you live, you're out doing things that the world does. You're doing things for the pleasures of sin. Instead of giving glory to the king. Giving glory to the king of all kings and the Lord of all lords. As Paul says, in all things, he should have the preeminence. The problem is, we have many people that would even profess Christ in sin sitting. And as Jesus said, if you love me, you keep my commandments. You're not going to come here and indulge yourself in all types of sin when you know Christ. You're going to abhor what is evil, cleave to what is good. Understand, you're going to abhor what is evil, cleave to what is good. That's what's going to happen. When someone is born again, they're going to they're abhor, they're going to have a hatred, a, a godly hatred for sin. They're going to have a godly hatred for, for a city like this. They're going to hate a city that's dedicated, that's dedicated to sin. They don't know what they're going to hate that. They're going to want to run to righteousness. We have Christ, that's what we desire. That's what the Apostle Paul said. I may know him and the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his suffering. They may be conformable on his death. If someone know Christ, I don't know Christ. If you don't know Christ today, any way to hell. Him, he gives you power over that lust. This is about the lust of the flesh, not true love. Sodomy, homosexuality, heterosexual, outside of a marriage covenant between one man and one woman is lust. And you're deceived by your own lust. That's what a person is. Because they don't love God. When God dwells in your heart, because I didn't love God either. When God saved me, he changed my nature. So he gave me the power. Uh, he gave me a new, with new desires. Like a pig uh, loves to go in the mud and eat trash. A pig's a pig. I can clean up a pig. I can wash it clean. I can put perfume on that pig. I make it look real good, smell real good, put earrings on it. I can put a bow on it. But if I let it, if I don't change its nature, it's going right back in the mud. It's going to get filthy again. Human nature is to sin and do evil. God has to change the nature, renew the mind, so it won't do that. If i got to make a pig like a cat, i got to give it the mind of a cat so it stays clean like a cat. Most cats will really clean them. So that's the example is that a dog returns to its own vomit. 
and a pig having washed which wallowing in the mire. If the human nature does not get changed by God, regenerated by the Holy Spirit, it will stay in its own vomit and sin and all types of sin. Idolatry. The greatest sin isn't homosexuality. The greatest sin is idolatry. You yourself as an idol, and then homosexuality, everything else follows that idolatry. So it starts with, I am the Lord thy God, and no other gods before me. When a person continually rebels against God, does what they want, says, I don't need you, God, suppresses the truth, and says, I'm going to go do what I want, all these other sins follow. That's, that, it's all about sin. It's all about the nature. So don't be deceived, folks, by the false racism of the world, by all the lies that God hates homosexuals. That's all they tell you. want to focus on one sin. God hates every worker of iniquity. God hates all, all types of sin and every sinner until they're born again under the hatred and wrath of God. That's what the Bible says. God does not love every individual the same way. God is not in love with the sinner. The Bible says God hates all workers of iniquity. God abhors the bloody, deceitful man. Now, the love of God rejoices in, not in iniquity, but in the truth. The love of God is telling people the truth about God so they can be saved from God and come into the everlasting love of God by believing on Christ and becoming a child of God. That's our hope here. That's reality. So you get delivered from the power of Satan's sin. Whatever sin you're bound by, Jesus came to set the captives free. Come to Jesus. If you come to the true Christ, not the Antichrist, if you come to the true Christ, you're going to love, serve, and obey God, and you're going to hate the sin you once loved. You're going to have a new heart that God gives you to, to live a holy life, a sober life. You're going to be uh, continually sanctified until the day you die, to be glorified into the kingdom of God without the temptations of this wicked life. Think about that. What a, what a gospel we have. That God is all powerful. So he would deliver you from every evil work. He says, he'll deliver you from every, every, anything you're tempted with, everything you're struggling with, whatever you're tempted with, you come to Christ. You come to Christ, you know, no Christ, no one wise cast you out. He will deliver you from every evil work. He is faithful and just to cleanse you of all unrighteousness, right? That's the most important thing. Well, God makes all the crooked places straight. Roughly. He makes everything straight. I mean, with he makes, well, he, we, we have to, if, you, if, you're, if you're in homosexual sin, and so he will deliver you from that. If you, if you get born again, you will no longer be able to live in that sin comfortably. You'll be terrified of it. You will hate it. You, when you try to do, when you try to make out with another man or do something sexual with another man, you're going to be so grieved over it. You're going to be, oh my God, I can't do this anymore. I love Jesus too much to cheat on him with another man. Wow. That's the gospel. In Jesus' name. Yeah, I so you're not going to, see... You're not going to whore yourself out with male or female out of the marriage covenant that God ordains when you're born again of the life of Christ because God lives your temple. Your body becomes a temple of the Holy Ghost. Your body becomes a temple of the Spirit of God. If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him, the Bible says. He says the temple of God is no agreement with idols. He says light has no communion with darkness. Christ has no conqueror of Belial or Satan. A, a believer has no part with an unbeliever. Righteousness has no fellowship with lawlessness. So you can try to twist my words all you want. It has nothing to do. He asked me a question about, specifically, what does God think about homosexual sin? What does God think about all sin? He hates it all. And so we have a world now that just wants to promote, you know what world we're living in now? Very dangerous world. The world we're living in now is going the way of Antichrist when the Bible declares in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 that he's going to oppose himself and exalt himself above all that is called God or that is worship. So he himself is a temple of God as though he is God. And he says, with all deceivableness of unrighteousness among those who build all power, signs, and lying wonders. There's going to be so much contrast to what God says in his word Everything ungodly is going to be promoted. Everything, well, God says we have marriage between a man and a woman. Why? So you can be fruitful and multiply, reproduce. Well, now we promote men with men, women with women. That's, a, wow, and we call that good. We call evil good and good evil. So we promote that, we make laws that support that, and that, dear friend, is an abomination to holy God, okay? That's just one example of, of many others. We promote the murder of the unborn. We take the life of millions of innocent children in the sanctuary of their mother's womb in this nation throughout the world. And we don't really feel any remorse over it. We just get seared consciences over it. This is the days that we're living in. 
in the last days, he says, perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unloving, unholy, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of God that is denying the power thereof, they're ever learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. They always learn all types of things. They're learning about everything, but they can't come to Christ as a truth. That's a sign of an apostate age, a cursed generation, the judgment of God upon a nation, upon the world. This is the Antichrist spirit. The Antichrist global government's on the way. The new world order is on the way. Everything about a one world religious system and one world government on the way. Well, you will not be able to bind or sell to take the mark of Satan. What a type of a, a gene-altering inoculation that you've been given. Some of you have been given that gene-altering inoculation. You pray to God. It doesn't change your DNA or you will be damned because that nature, you no longer be mankind if your genes are altered, if that be such the case. Friends, these are leading to the mark of the beast system, the kingdom of the Antichrist, and you're going to be in that system and eternally destroyed unless God saves you and makes you born again. The way you're going to understand these things, where you're going to turn from your evil ways, where you're going to turn away from all your abominable and detestable idols, even your own life on the throne of your own heart. Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. Jesus is able to save the uttermost of those who come to God through him. You see how this is not a message of condemnation. In John 3, 18, he says, if you do not believe in Jesus Christ, you're already condemned because you have not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. You're already damned outside of Christ. I can't condemn you. I'm not here to judge you. God knows you. How do I speak to you right now? Where you, if you died right now, where would you be? If God took your life, you know you'd be in hell a lot of you right now. Yeah, I'm not messing around with this. I don't need your money here tonight. Hey, friends, I don't need anything from you tonight but give you the truth of God's word because most of these hirelings that are so-called pastors in these false evangelical churches are an abomination. That's they are right. spiritual whores. That's right. They are prostituting themselves for a false Christ for a filthy lucre. They won't tell you this because they talk to you like this. You'd never go to church. Most of you'd run out of the building. See, we get to tell you the truth about this. God's ordained this work before the foundation to be here in Sin City and tell you the truth for you from all over the world. God's ordained this. No one's going to stop until God's done with it. It's a, it's a work of God that God has established here so that you can hear the word and you're going to be accountable for what you heard. And we plead with you tonight. Don't harden your necks. Don't harden your hearts. You are in great danger. If you don't have Christ, you're an enemy of God. If you don't have Christ, you're under the wrath of God. If you die outside of Christ, you will burn the flames of a low hell. You must be born again. You must be born again. As Jesus told Nicodemus, he said, you must be born again, not of flesh. But of the Spirit of God, you must be born again. He says, it's born of the flesh, it's flesh, it's born of the Spirit, it's Spirit, blah, blah, blah. He must be born again. He says, for God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who has the Son has life. He who hath not the Son hath not life, but the wrath of God. Are you a child of wrath tonight? Are you a child of mercy? There's no in between. The Lord will be going to be spewed out of his mouth, rest in the lake of fire for all eternity. See, either you're all in to serve Christ, or you are rejecting Christ. Because you can't serve two masters. You have to love the one and hate the other, despise the one and reject the other. You can't serve God and heaven. And you must be born again. The Bible says, No longer you can fall into this world, but transform the renewing of your mind, that you may prove it is a good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That's only possible. In the supernatural work, when God regenerates the soul, when God saves a sinner from death to life, turns them from the power of Satan unto God, from the darkness to the light, to receive forgiveness of sins. That's what happens. Someone looks to Christ. That's why he said in Isaiah 40, thought that God said, What can a man be saved on the ends of the earth? He said, For I am God and there is Who else are you going to worship? Who else are you going to serve? They can't raise you from the dead. They have no power to save you from hell. Sin isn't really worth it. Is it really worth living for the pleasures of sin? The pleasures of sin for a season. Is it really worth living for 
worship. And the Bible is countless, endless warnings. Be sure your sin will find you out. He says the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. Sin is gonna, you're gonna be paid off. It's gonna pay the, the consequence. Your life led to sin. You're gonna get some reward. The Bible says, how much more abominable and filthy is man who drinks iniquity like water? That's just naturally what we do. This place, the flesh loves this place. That's naturally what we do. We want to come to a place like this. Of course we would. We need to be able to bring our children to a place like this. I would never, if somebody had paid me to bring my children to a place like this, and show them all the types of the box and the wickedness. That just shows that the parents are. The heart of man is a sequel of all things. And desperately wicked, who can help? What a family place this is. What a wonderful family place this is. What a foolishness. And the Bible says, train up a child in the way they should get when they only want the cover. That's why we have a generation, a generation that hates the God of heaven. That's why we have a generation that will not submit to any authority. He is being taught all the wrong things. He's being taught all the wrong things. He doesn't understand that God's word, God's word is the authority. God's word is all that matters. That's how we're supposed to live our lives according to Scripture. If God is commanding uh, people everywhere to repent, what does that mean to repent? It's a godly sorrow, a, a broken contrite heart before God that produces repentance leading God's unto salvation. In other words, it's not when you're sorry for the evil, something that happens to you God's bad saving. in your life and you're just sorry about the consequences thereof, the circumstances that you're in. You're actually broken and contrite before God hating how you've offended God and then you've come into a place of uh, that there's no hope for you apart from Jesus Christ crucified on the cross risen again from the dead you embrace him as all you have if you don't come to that place you will not be saved you will die in your sins God, no, you're not going to listen to the second day of burning in the lake of fire. You're going to wish you were never born in that case. Turn to me evil ways. If you die without Jesus Christ, it would be better that you'd never been born than betray the Son of God. Now turn and live. For the Lord God takes no pleasure in death who of one who dies. And then dies meaning they'll die eternally, perish in their sins. He says turn and live. All that the Father have given you will come to me, and he who comes to me on no wise cast. Have you come to Christ? Have you come into a saving, personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ? God is not mocked. Well, yes, and that, and that shows the heart. He answered very quickly. He cursed and said, no way. Well, why haven't you come to the God who made you and has given you everything? Because you hate God? Do you hate the Lord Jesus Christ? Your works will show that. You'll know them by their fruits. Everyone has a God-hating heart, is a rebel against God, running away from God, headlong to hell. But when God turned you to Christ, from darkness to light, then you're going to love God. If you love me, keep my commands. If you love him, you're going to want to please him. Because he pours out his love in your heart by the Holy Spirit. And he himself is on the throne of your heart. And you love to please God. What doesn't please God is living a life of idolatry, worshiping false gods, living a life of habitual sin and wickedness. What are examples of wickedness? Well, we naturally as human beings lie, cheat, steal, curse. We want to bring attention to ourselves. We, want, we, we, we live after the lust of our flesh, the lust of our eyes, the pride of life. Whatever feels good, whatever sounds good to us, we follow the dictates of our own evil hearts. Uh, that is our uh, mode of operation as human beings, naturally born sinners in Adam. The doctrine of two men, Adam, the first Adam, the last Adam, the first Adam who fell out of covenant with God by sinning against God in the Garden of Eden. No one can return to God in that first man. Jesus, the second man, the last man, uh, the eternal Son of God, you're born of the incorruptible seed of the Word of God to return to God. So there's only two types of people in the world, those who are in Christ and those who are out of Christ. That's all the other systems politically and all these other things, they have nothing to do pretending your salvation. It's not the color of your skin. 
It is not anything to do with anything that you have in and of yourselves. It is who you are by nature. A fallen creature, dead in trespass and sins, enemy of God, living on the broad way that leads to destruction, going your own way, not God's way, doing your will, not God's will, uh, never seeking God, never loving God, always hating God, always serving yourself as you are an idol, as your own God. Now when God debases you, when God dethrones you from the pride of your own heart, you come to a place of such a sorrow to God that you see Jesus Christ as Lord of all, that there's no other God besides Him, and you surrender to His Lordship. You repent of your sins. You, the repentance is coming away from your lifestyle uh, against, against contrary to God. It's going away from God, and you run to Christ, and you all you want to do... I, I, God save you. In your life is please God as your father. You become a child of God. You get the spirit of adoption poured out in your heart, crying, Abba. Father becomes dad down. No longer judge over you as a criminal, waiting to be indicted to be thrown into hell. When you're born again, this is the hope for you. That Jesus Christ bore all your criminal charges on the cross. For those who believe on him, all those criminal charges which are countless. Millions upon you. millions of crimes against God that are on your account that you're waiting to be judged for. And you're getting away with a lot now. He says, because the sentence of an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the hearts of the sons of men are fully set them to do evil. Because you can get away with everything now, because you can do what you want now, how you want now, and you don't get judged right away by God for it, you think you're going to get away with it, but here's the, here's the problem. Your foot's going to slip in due time. You are a dying creature. You're going to die from the sinful nature you inherit from your father Adam. If you die in your sins, that's going to be where you stand before the tribunal of God, the unholy dead, the great white throne of judgment, according to Revelation chapter 20, and you're going to be judged out of the things written in the books, each one according to their works. Your friend, all your secrets are going to be revealed before your grandparents, before your family, your friends, before all of creation, the mighty angels. Everyone's going to see who you really were. You're not going to have all the facades, the smoke and mirrors you're going to put up. God knows who you really are. God has everything written down what you were already done. And so if you meet God in that condition, that's why we love and we warn you. We're not here to hurt you. We're not here to because we hate you. We're not here because we're better than you. We were saved by the grace of God because we were running headlong to hell. And God turned us from the error of our way. God turned us to Christ. And so now, as a result of that love poured out our hearts, we plead with you on behalf of Christ, in Christ's stead, for you to be reconciled to God, for you to come into the one who all, the, all we have is a great creator, because your life is worthless without him. It is vanity of vanities. All is vanity. It's a part of life. There's nothing here for you to see this dung pile of buildings and lights. Who cares about this when you have the Most High God who made the heavens and the earth, the countless stars and the sky. As you look at all the display of His glory, the heavens declaring it, and you actually can know this God personally. You can actually, actually, we really know him. It becomes dad dad to you. You can worship him in spirit and truth. Think about that. What a waste of time to live our lives for all these other. This is all vanity. This is all passing away. This is going to burn. God's going to weigh waste. Some of you are going to watch this fire show. You came out here to watch this fire show. I want you to think a lot about hell out here tonight. You're going to feel the heat of these flames. From ways away, this is nothing compared to the wrath of God that will be fully executed upon the unrepentant sinner. The impenitent, hardened sinner that rejects this message and lives for their own false religions and their own lusts and dies in their sins will be cast into everlasting conscious torment in a lake of fire. A liquid lake of fire to burn in a resurrected, glorified body that will be able to endure that. There'll be no hiding place or a place to cool off. There'll be no one to get any relief. The eternality of hell, the horrors of hell. There is a real hell. They're, they're, they're descending, he says in Isaiah 14, that hell from beneath is moved for thee. It is excited, meet thee at thy coming. Hell, he says, uh, hell has opened her mouth open her mouth beyond measure. And he says, the glory and their multitude and their pomp 
and he who rejoices shall descend into it. Hell has opened its mouth to receive the masses of people falling into the fires of hell. That's when the judgment of God is fully executed. That's why you need Christ who bore that on the cross. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, made the atonement required for sin to reconcile his people back to God. It was a complete work. It is a finished work. God give me the grace that one of the you. first scriptures it says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I God save you. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation to those God who believe. Salvation is a new creation, those who have been born of God. 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 If you have not been born of God, come. He says, Come now. Let us reason together, say the Lord, for your sins be as scarlet. They shall be white as snow, and then they be red like crooks, and they shall be as wool. Come to the Lord Jesus. Now is the day of salvation. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none of the name under heaven. Given among men whereby we must be saved. He that hath the Son hath life. The wrath of God comes upon the disobedience. If you're here in this moment with imaginations of disobedience, your cup is not full. It is being filled up. Surely the wrath of man shall praise thee. The remainder of wrath are shall be strength. Worthy is the Lamb. Yeah. The Lord Jesus, worthy is the Lamb. Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. The King of kings and the Lord of lords takes away the sin of the world. The sin is bringing God's wrath. Wrath is being built up for the day of judgment. Except ye repent, ye will all likewise perish. Look unto Christ this evening. Worthy is the Lamb. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty. Which was and is and is to come. Oh, the Lord Jesus is your only hope. That's it. The King of Kings is your only hope. The anchor of my salvation is your only hope. Saved a wretched sinner like me from abominable filth, gambling and greed and lust, set me free. Worthy is the Lamb. There's one God, one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. There is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we again. must be saved. Saved from the filthiness. As he says, that which is filthy will be filthy still. As the sinner is in a place of filth, in a place of dung. He says he raised the poor out of the dust. He lifted the needy out of the dung hill. You don't know you're in a dung hill. Maybe because sin brings God's wrath. It blinds your eyes. You don't know you smell like death until God opens up your blind eyes. He does that through the gospel. The, the purity of the gospel. It says, If any man thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He that believes in me, as the scripture said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Hallelujah. It's a wonderful living water. That those who have been saved, now you're clean by the word which he's spoken unto you. The sinners are, that have not been born of God are clean to the word which he's spoken when they've been born from above, born of God, born of an incorruptible seed. You're born not of blood, not the will of flesh, not the will of man, but of God. Those who have been born of the incorruptible seed, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, and every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. Praise. Praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Folks, your time is short. As you're here today wobbling around and trying to get from point A to point B, you see old people, young people. Your, your life is here today, gone tomorrow. Your days are as a shadow that decline. You're withering like grass. Right now, your wretched life in Adam is withering like grass. Your days are a shadow. They are de declining. As we are here today, gone tomorrow. Naked you came out of your mother's room, naked you're going to leave. The Word of God is quick and powerful. We trust it. As it raises 
the sinner from the dead. You That's have been quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. As the Lord has seen, since you and myself, it's the word of God that quickens us. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. It is a command from the Lord Jesus to go into all the world and preach the gospel, this gospel of grace, that your works are like filthy rags, all the abominable religious works are like filthy rags. It's the work of Christ, is what Jesus has done on the cross in trusting in Him through that blessing, the everlasting arms, who's wounded for our transgressions. We come to Him by faith. God save you. And faith comes by hearing. The Bible says, it reproves and rebukes and exhorts. It exposes, the Bible says, it goes through the traits and the marrow and discerns the thoughts and intents of a person's heart. That's why you hate the Word of God. That's why I want them when I open up the Word of God. Because it discerned my heart. It exposed my wicked heart. That's what the Bible does to you. That's what it does to every sinner. It exposes the wicked hearts. It exposes the corrupt desires. Right up to man, but the end thereof is the way of death. You understand the way that you think is right according to your own standard? Have you corrupt and deceitfully wicked heart? The Bible says that's the way of death. Our hearts. So is he. So is he. Keep the heart with all diligence, or out of it are the issues of life. The Bible says, it proceeds out of the heart, goes forth out of the mouth, and it defiles the man. Mark 7. And Jesus said, all different types of sin. He says, adultery, idolatry, fornication, blasphemy, lasciviousness, covetousness, drunkenness, sodomy, every sin imaginable comes from that heart. We inherited his sinful nature, and that's why Jesus said you must be born again and receive a new nature. You need a new nature. You need to become a new creature. For the old things pass away, and behold, all things become new. That must happen. If that doesn't happen, you're going to die in your sins. You're going to die in your sins. The Bible says the wicked are like a troubled sea, but it cannot rest. His will is cast the by your dirt. There's no peace, says my God, for the wicked. No peace. Because you don't have the Prince of Peace. You're going about life, trying to fulfill all your laws, trying to fulfill that fulfill that void that God has put there. The, yes, the law of God is written on your, your conscience. It's on your heart. Man is created. What is the first question in the Catechism? What is man's chief end? To glorify God and enjoy Him forever. Why do you exist? You would exist to fulfill yourself with all different types of lust. You exist to glorify God. That's why we're created. That's why we're created. That's why man and women exist to glorify God. That's why everything, creation, everything exists to glorify the Creator. Understand this today. We who forget God will see glory and peace as we not in the living. He's going to deliver you from the coming of the Lord's wrath. How is it possible to escape the damnation of hell? Without Christ, it's impossible. So, where's your ruler? He says, oh, I kept the law. And Jesus said, Okay, go sell all that you have and take up your cross and follow me. The Bible says, This he couldn't do. This he couldn't do. That means, see, that's, that's, that's a good example to you tonight. That's an example to sinners. That's what Christ wants, to take up your cross and follow him. Forsake the sin, run from the sin, and run to the cross. The rich young ruler couldn't do that. And then he said, he said, can a rich man enter the kingdom of heaven? Jesus said, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. He says, with man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. I was a person, you go back 10 years ago, I wasn't doing anything different than you're doing tonight. I was a person 
God from that to this. Because with God it's possible. With God it is possible. That's the only way you can be saved. Is by unmerited favor, which is grace. Grace. Grace, the grace of God. How is this? How is it possible? Can a sinner have peace with God? Can you possibly have peace with God? He says, yes, you can. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ, as Romans 5 wants it. You can have peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the only way it is possible. Without Christ. There's no peace to the wicked. No peace. Well, you can have some sort of false peace right now, walking around here, thinking you have freedom because uh, a, a lot of the restrictions are lifted and all this and all that. But understand, you're a complete slave. You're not free at all. The only way you're free is when you run to the cross. Wow. That's the only way you're free. You're in bondage to your sin. That's what drove you here. The wicked is driven away in his own wickedness. The righteous have hope in his death. The righteous have hope in their death. The wicked don't have any. The Lord preserves all them that love him, but the wicked he will destroy. Understand that. 